you talked to, about your career as, as an author. How did you know when you wanted to become an author? And then how did you go out and take action and, and write it? Let's apply this paradigm to your okay. life. Okay. So for the last 10 years or so before I was writing the book, I, I was writing a, uh, a column for the Jerusalem Post and mm -hmm. uh, writing very, uh, almost daily editorials for the Jerusalem Post. Uh, both of which are, you know, each piece is uh, 800 to 1,000 words, something like that, quite short. And uh, I, I, for some time, thought, you know, I, I want to go the other end of the spectrum. I don't want to write short pieces. I want to write something really long and get in-depth in one topic rather than writing a lot about everything. Right. So, um, and then Dan came along with the idea for the book. So it was perfect timing, and, uh, and uh, I took... I took uh, time off from my job at the at the Jerusalem Post to do it, and uh, you know neither Dan or I had really written a book. I mean, I had, I had another book of my columns that had come out before, but that wasn't that was a collection, not a a full blown book. So uh, that was definitely a, a learning process right there. Well, speaking of books, let's go to the book here. I want to I want to bring up a couple passages that I thought were really profound and and. Um, and ask you a couple questions about them. Um, on page 205, there's a quote that talks about affluence and motive. And one of the things that Israel has is a motive. But in cultures that seem to be more affluent, it tends to smother that motive. That being said, can affluence and motive share a healthy coexistence? I, what we were talking about there is the, that Israel is not only a country with thousands of startups, but more startups than, than uh, any other country for its size, certainly probably number two in absolute terms to the United States. Uh, that's not just a country with lots of startups, but the country itself is a startup. Mm -hmm. And that, that, the fact that Israel started from an idea, from the idea of returning to the ancient land of Israel, uh, and that it took so much work, it was so difficult to create the state and to maintain the state and still, even today, to survive. That provides Israelis with a kind of built-in sense of purpose. I, I think the key word is service, really, because, mm -hmm. you know, it's military service. Mm -hmm. Where you also talk about national service or community service. And any kind of service, I think, is a, can be a powerful tool for developing these kind of skills because it's very important to be able to think outside of yourself. I mean, if, you're, if you think about what we do, you know, we're in an academic environment for the first part of our lives, and then we go into a business environment. Um, in either of those environments, do you necessarily get leadership skills or get, or get the sense that there's something larger than you that it's worth sacrificing for? Right. And, and that's, that's the, where the sense of purpose comes in. So what role will entrepreneurship or should entrepreneurship have in solving many of the economic challenges that we face on a global level? Well, one of the important things to understand is that entrepreneurship and uh, just to broaden that, small businesses generally are a huge generator of jobs. In some ways, economists argue the most important generator of jobs. That, uh, uh, you know, at times when it seems our economy is growing, we're getting more jobs, that if you, if you took small businesses out of that picture, you'd actually see it shrinking, that mm -hmm. most of it is from small businesses. Um, so, you know, in the Arab world where they do have to figure out how to come up with millions of new jobs for, for young people, um, it, it's, it's a very important uh, component of their economy, and, and I think they, they're having trouble. I mean, they, uh, I don't think that you can be entrepreneurial in a country that's completely top-down, either from a political or economic perspective. It needs, you need to have a, a free market, you need to have the ability to take risks and all. Uh, you need to have a culture that supports that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's a very important for jobs in this country. I mean, right. Because, uh, uh, I mean, innovation is, has been America's strong suit uh, for most of its history. And um, I, I think it's the future in terms of, of how you drive the economy so it's, it's a sustainable growth, so it's not a bubble. So it's real. I mean, economists. There's there's a consensus among economists that that uh, that economic growth comes from productivity increases, and productivity increases come from innovation and technology. They don't come from you know big credit bubbles or or uh, you know 
subprime mortgages or all those kind of financial gains, they come from innovation that increases productivity. So that's what really America and every country has to focus on going forward in terms of creating jobs. Well, these are all great lessons. Um, I just want to share one final excerpt from the book. To, to sum up Startup Nation, it is a story not just of talent, but of tenacity, of insatiable questioning of authority, of determined informality, combined with an attitude toward failure, teamwork, mission, risk, and cross-disciplinary creativity. Guys, go out, pick up Startup Nation. It's a phenomenal book. I read it. Uh, I can attest to the fact that this will change your life, give you some great perspectives. Saul, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Until next time, live strong, live with passion, and find your inner entrepreneur.